the last time we saw the hoffman wieland theorem which said that if a and e are matrices such that both a and a plus e are normal matrices and if lambda 1 through lambda n are eigenvalues of a and lambda hat 1 through lambda hat n are eigenvalues of a plus e then there is a permutation of the eigenvalues of a plus e such that each eigenvalue of a plus e is close enough to the corresponding eigenvalue of a in the sense that the sum of the squares of these differences is at most the spectral norm squared of e so today we start on a on another topic which is the singular value decomposition so so far we have focused our attention on um, square matrices so now we start discussing about rectangular matrices um, suppose uh, so basically we these are matrices of size m by n and m need not be equal to n so one can view this as a linear map from the c to the n space to the c power m space that is it maps an n dimensional vector to another m m dimensional vector in uh, the complex space we have a few uh, sort of preliminary or precursor lemmas um, and then we will go to the main theorem um, now um, there is one uh, one thing i want to mention which is actually not here so remember that i mean we will be working with the with the uh, induced uh, spectral norm that is specifically um, a2, which is the max over norm x2 equals 1, norm of Ax L2. Now, we know that induced norms uh, satisfy submultiplicativity. Now, um, when it comes to, so this is uh, for square matrices. We had defined this for square matrices. But we can always define something like this for rectangular matrices also. Okay, because after all, you can compute the Euclidean norm of any vector, and Ax is a vector. The only thing is that this constraint space is a is over the space C to the n, or x belongs to C to the n, whereas the objective is be being evaluated on a vector that is sitting in C to the m. So it is perfectly okay to define uh, the norm A2 to be a quantity like this, even if the matrix A is rectangular. Now, um, we know that these induced norms satisfy the submultiplicativity property, and that extends also to rectangular matrices. So, specifically, this, this kind of norm, it satisfies the property that AB L2 is less than or equal to A times B2. Of course, here A and B are matrices that can be multiplied together. Okay, so for example, this could be M by N and this could be N by K or something. Okay, then it, then this is still true where these, these norms are evaluated as given above. Okay, so this is one property and this is easy to show. Its proof lies, is, is exactly the same as uh, the proof of the some, uh, pro we, we showed a result that said that induced norms satisfy the submultiplicativity pro property, and the proof of this is exactly the same. Okay, now a few other um, uh, precursor lemmas that we need are that um, so if A is an M by N matrix, then the eigenvalues of A Hermitian A are always non negative. We know this already, but um, anyway, the proof is just one line. If a Hermitian A times V equals lambda times V. Simply pre-multiply by V Hermitian, you get V Hermitian A Hermitian AV equals lambda times V Hermitian V. Lambda is just a scalar. And uh, this is just the L2 norm squared of AV. And this is the L2 norm squared of V. And both are therefore real and non-negative. And since V is an eigenvector, it's a non-zero vector. And so this is actually strictly positive. So this means that lambda, see, this is this is real. This is also real value, and so lambda cannot suddenly become complex value. So lambda is, uh, and both are non-negative. So lambda is real valued and it's non-negative. 
Huh. So now we formally define the singular values of a matrix. So take a rectangular matrix uh, A, then the singular values, which I'll abbreviate as S values of this matrix A, are denoted by sigma 1 through sigma n, where these are ordered in that sigma 1 is the largest singular value, and sigma n is the smallest singular value. So I'm indexing it by the number of columns here. Okay, and uh, and sigma 1 squared through sigma n squared are the eigenvalues of A Hermitian A. So this is the crucial point here, that sigma 1 squared up to sigma n squared, these are the eigenvalues of A Hermitian A. And we already saw that these eigenvalues are non-negative, so I can take the positive square root and that gives me what the singular values are. So it completely defines the singular values. Now, Another, uh, another lemma is that uh, if A is of size M by N, then rank of A is the same as rank of A Hermitian A, which is the same as rank of A, A Hermitian. So A Hermitian A, so if A is M by N, A Hermitian A is of size N cross N, and A, A Hermitian is of size M cross M. So rank of A is uh, at most min of M N, and it's also equal to the rank of this uh, n cross n matrix and it's also equal to the rank of this n cross n matrix. I want to show this. It's actually very easy to prove. First of all, rank of a matrix, rank of AB is at most the rank of A and the rank of B. So from that you get an inequality that says rank of A um, is uh, is uh, rank of A trans A Hermitian A is less than or equal to rank of A. And then to show the reverse inequality, then uh, what you do is you start with A Hermitian A V equals zero. And uh, if, if that is true, then uh, V Hermitian times A Hermitian A V equals zero. Or in other words, uh, A V uh, that uh, V Hermitian A Hermitian A V is nothing but norm of AV squared. And if that is equal to zero, it means AV must be equal to zero. So the null space of A Hermitian A is therefore contained in the null space of A. Then you use the rank nullity theorem. So you should write this out for yourself, but it's not a difficult result to show. And I have a few remarks. Um, if the rank of A is equal to R as a consequence of this. If rank of A is R, then the first R singular values of A will be positive and all the other singular values will be equal to zero. So the rank of the matrix determines how many non-zero singular values you will have. And if A is a, a square matrix, it's of size N cross N, then lambda is a non-zero eigenvalue of A Hermitian A if and only if lambda is a non-zero eigenvalue of A A Hermitian as well. And finally, if uh, A and A Hermitian, they have the same rank and they also have the same set of non-zero singular values. If M is not equal to N, then one of them will have more zeros occurring as singular values. Okay. So these are some small remarks and you can actually uh, relate to these after we go through the SVD theorem. Okay, so here is the singular value decomposition theorem. What I like about this theorem is that it applies to any rectangular matrix. Okay, there's absolutely no structural assumptions being made. So A can be any M by N matrix and let sigma 1 through sigma r be the non-zero singular values of A, where r is equal to the rank of A. And suppose these singular values are ordered so that sigma 1 is greater than or equal to, etc., greater than or equal to sigma r, which is strictly greater than zero because there are r non-zero singular values. Let d be a d cross d, uh, sorry, r cross r diagonal matrix with sigma 1 through sigma r al along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. And sigma is a matrix of size M by N with D as its top left R cross R block and zeros everywhere else. Then you can find a unitary U of size M by M 
and a unitary v of size n by n such that u hermitian a v equals sigma this diagonal matrix but it's not a square diagonal matrix it's a diagonal matrix of size m by n and it has sigma 1 through sigma r or as its top left uh, r cross r block and zeros everywhere else so that is what this theorem says so we'll we'll sir, prove the theorem yeah so what is the difference between eigen value and singular value so um, the it, it you can see that here from the definition and we will discuss that a little more uh, later um, but the singular values okay of a matrix squared are the eigen values of a hermitian a okay for now this is the relationship that we've seen okay, okay. in general if a, since we are discussing rectangular matrices you can't talk about eigen values of a okay ax is not in the same space it's of size m whereas x is of size n so you cannot write an equation like ax equals lambda x is if a is of size m by n but if a is a square matrix we'll see what the relationship between the singular values and the eigen values of uh, a are but for now we are discussing rectangular matrices and so we cannot write a direct relationship between i mean eigen values are not even defined for a rectangular a but when i take a matrix a hermitian a that is a square matrix and i can define eigen values for it and the eigen values are all non negative and if i denote them by sigma 1 squared up to sigma n squared then sigma 1 through sigma n will be the singular values of a that's the definition that's just directly the definition okay sir okay sir uh, yeah go sir, ahead please yeah can we say that the um, pos uh, singular values are the positive roots of the eigen values of a hermitian a that is right that is exactly what we are saying here that if 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 i denote the eigen values of a hermitian a which are all non negative by sigma 1 squared through sigma n squared then sigma 1 is the positive root of those eigen values of a hermitian a sigma 2 is the positive uh, root uh, positive square root of the second largest eigen value of a hermitian a and so on 